Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to The Ultimate Reactions. I'm your host, Tori McGowan. Make sure to follow me on the socials. And if you're new to this channel, make sure to hit that subscribe button and hit that bell icon for post notifications. Today, we're going to look at apartment horror animation story. So let's take a look. About five months ago, a friend of mine got expelled from his program because of bad marks. He was only halfway through his lease, and he didn't see a point of staying in the city since he was only here for school. Hmm. He told me that if I wanted to take over his lease as a subletter, he would only half charge me the rent, which I thought was a pretty sweet deal. So naturally, although I am from this town, I thought it was time to leave for my parents' place. I had already graduated, and although I had been looking for a new job for a while, I still felt like I couldn't miss out on the opportunity. So I took hmm. over his lease and moved into his place. The house itself is actually pretty nice. It's three floors, including the basement, and it's located near the university of my town, which That's is not good. a very safe area overall, but I spent a lot of my university years here and never felt unsafe. The room in the basement is pretty small but cozy, and the only other room down here is a girl who is currently a student, and she's pretty quiet. Actually, all the girls living here are pretty good roommates. I wasn't thrilled about living with three girls, but now I don't see why I would have thought it was an issue. <laughs> They're all pretty great and a good time. I'm the only one in the house who is not a student, <laughs> and also the only one who is originally from this town. The other roommates I are actually all from cities that are only about an hour or two away at most, so unless there's something special going on, they all go home on weekends. My friend who got expelled also only lives two hours away, so he would always go home for the weekend as well. One thing I forgot to mention, which is pretty crucial to the story, is that the house actually has five rooms, but... Right when they all moved into the new place together, one of the girls had a seizure on her bed and passed mm. away. This was pretty upsetting for everyone, and the landlord told them not to worry about finding anyone That's else. That's disturbing. The rent never went up or anything, and the room was mm. left vacant. According to the landlord, she looks he like just a found zombie. sensitive to try and find someone because he didn't want to turn someone's death into a financial inconvenience for him. So, after the girl's death, the parents came and took her belongings out of the room, and it just remained empty since then. I actually never looked in there because it just remained locked, and I don't really have much curiosity to see the room. I would it's on be the second curious. floor, and I never go up there, so I never paid any attention to it. The first weekend I spent there was pretty uneventful. I remember that I spent one night at a boyfriend's place, and then the next night he slept over after we went out drinking at one of the college bars near the place. We were pretty wasted, so we passed out as soon as we got home. The next weekend, I was at home in my new room, and I couldn't sleep, so I decided to read a little bit. I was really enjoying the quietness of this new house since the girls weren't home at all. I come from a Latino family, so this quiet and serene environment was pretty rare. I thought that I heard a few noises upstairs, so I figured that one of the girls had probably decided to stay the weekend at the house, or she was just getting last-minute things ready before heading home. I didn't think much of this thing. I wasn't very close with the roommates, so I didn't even bother asking them if any of them had stayed home. I just felt like it was none of my business. The girl in the basement was for sure gone for the weekend because she mm. apparently sleeps with her door locked and keeps it open when she's not home. One weekend, That's that weird. same month, I woke up to pee and I could hear a toilet flushing upstairs, which was kind of weird since I knew that none of the girls were home. I was going to go check it out, but in my tired state, I was too lazy and just didn't care enough. It's funny, horror movies are supposed to make you paranoid, but the biggest lesson I got from them was that there's always a rational explanation for things. This would prove to be my biggest mistake, because for a couple of months, I was always brushing things off and ironically creating irrational explanations to rationalize what I thought were irrational thoughts. For example... I heard creaking coming from the second floor and figured one of the girls must have forgotten something and decided to come by to pick it up. Hmm. The girl must have driven two hours down and two hours back to her town in the middle of the night to pick something up. That does not Saturday, look like one of the to get girls. Water and I noticed that the roommate in the basement was gone. Her door was open and her car was not in the driveway. There weren't any cars in the driveway, but I should mention that one of the girls doesn't drive. A couple of hours later, I woke up because I heard steps coming down into the basement. Oh, no. At this point, I yelled out the girl's mm. name who doesn't drive because she is the only one who could have been in the house. I didn't get a reply and just heard the steps going back upstairs. At this point, I started getting uneasy about being home on weekends, so I decided mm. just to spend them at my boyfriend's house. One of the girls made a house Facebook page 
which was supposed to address any issues like washing dishes or leaving messes, but it remained pretty inactive since everyone seemed to get along. I posted on there that some creepy stuff was happening on weekends and asked them if they could start letting me know if they'd be home for the night or not. They seriously thought I was joking around. The replies were not receptive at all and consisted of laugh out louds and oh my god you're so funny. Even my boyfriend agreed that I was being paranoid because he too believed that everything had a rational and perfect explanation. The thing is, when you say that everything has an explanation, you are only invalidating paranormal explanations or ghostly activity, which (laughs) is not what I was implying at all. I've never believed in ghosts or spirits or any of that jazz, and I never claimed to when I spoke to my roommates or to my boyfriend. They kept saying that the house was old and made noises, but I know the difference between old house noises and someone walking down the stairs and back up the stairs. Yeah. Fortunately, my roommates did start posting things on the Facebook page to let me know they'd be gone. It was always to the effect of, Hey, I won't be home this weekend, so don't worry about the ghosts. One week... Wonder what that means. I'm curious. Let me know in the comments what you think of that text message. That kind of gives me the chills, and I don't... Let's just continue it. They let me know that they would not be home, and my boyfriend was on the midnight shift, so I had to spend the night on my own. My boyfriend called me on his break while I was on the phone with him. I heard noises on the main floor. I told him I was going to go check it out. And he told me to go ahead because that idiot still thought I was just being paranoid. <laughs> As I said this, idiot. I heard the footsteps going back up the second floor. Once I got onto the main floor, there was nobody in the kitchen, and all the doors into the house were locked. I was extremely paranoid and didn't feel safe. My boyfriend calmed me down and convinced me that everything was okay. So I never went to the second floor, and it's probably best that I stayed on the main floor. After the weekend, I told yeah. my roommates in all seriousness that I was convinced They're all that looking someone at him had like, been in our house what? at some point that night. <laughs> I told them what I heard, and all those idiots still claimed that it was the old house making noises. <laughs> my boyfriend was almost permanently on midnight, so I did what I never wanted to do and started spending weekends at my parents' place. The girls still posted too. on the page whether or not they were leaving the house or not, and I decided that I should do the same. So I also started posting when I was and was not sleeping at the house. (laughs) One Friday night, the Facebook page looks something like this. Roommate 1, not sleeping at home. Roommate 2, not sleeping at home. Roommate 3, staying home because of midterm exams. (laughs) Me, I'm staying at my parents. The next morning, I received a frantic text from one of the roommates saying that the roommate with the midterms had been attacked. Oh no! Apparently... She was in her room studying and heard a noise right outside of her bedroom. When she went out to inspect it, she was greeted by a man walking out of the dead girl's room. Oh my gosh! I later gosh, found out more details about the whole creepy. thing from the roommate who was attacked. Oh my gosh! The man looked rough, greasy Ooh. hair, and just a dirty face. When they made eye contact, it looks he like held a his zombie. finger to his mouth and uttered a shh while smiling. The nail on his finger was long. And his beard was apparently really scraggly and uneven, like it only grew in certain parts of his face. Mm. She screamed out of instinct, even though she knew there was nobody in the house. He lunged at her as she tried to shut the door, and she wasn't beaten up too badly. He just growled and told her to shut her mouth and said something like, I'm not going to hurt you, but keep your mouth shut. He beat her, but not completely unconscious. And then when he walked out of her room, he went downstairs and walked out the front door. So we left the dead girl's room unlocked. My roommate locked herself in her room and called the police who were there immediately. Oh yeah, the door where the girl the um, thing is died when they was the unlocked dead girl's room, and opened. They kept asking for Mysterious. clarification. So nobody has lived in this room for how long? Nobody has been renting this room, right? Did the parents take everything after the girl passed away? The guy had a really sweet setup actually and had brought his own small mattress to put over the bed frame. Obviously, the mattress was too small for the bed frame. He left most of his stuff because he probably didn't expect a confrontation that night. Hmm. I don't think he knew she would be there that night because she never was. It probably sucked for him when I moved in because before me, that idiot had the whole house to himself two days a week. The police did ask me quite a lot of questions and were interested in hearing my statement about hearing Hmm. footsteps at night. My three roommates and my friend are now convinced that maybe the girl didn't die the way they said she did. And maybe he 
had something to do with it. But I think the autopsy would have been able to distinguish a murder from a seizure. Yeah, no defense, right? The whole thing is really creepy. We're not really sure how long the guy had been living there, but it's very likely that it had been for at least a few months. The theory is that the guy had been climbing in through the window, so it's possible that he was even there at times when all of us were there. Mm. The police are really interested in talking to the landlord because they want to know how the man found out about the vacant room. The landlord is a pretty decent guy, so I don't know if there's anything going on there. I don't even feel an I told you so attitude from this whole thing. Hmm. I think that I am just glad that the ah! girl is okay because she seemed pretty shaken up. I just wish oh people gosh. were more willing to listen to me when I told them that I thought somebody was coming into our home. I even said it might be a squatter, which everyone laughed at. This happened very recently, that so could be it true, might be though. a while before an update. As of now, the man had not been found by police, but the police remain optimistic about finding him. Whatever that means. Right. Hmm. That's very interesting. That story was very interesting. It makes me wonder what that scraggly looking guy was from. Uh, was he the girl that died of a seizure? Or was he from something that happened very tragic in the past before the girl with the seizure? Let me know in the comments what you think. Um, but... Anyways, on that note, hopefully you enjoyed watching this video. Um, let's get this video up to 100 likes so we can have more videos like this. Um, I'm trying to get to 1,000 subscribers, so please help support me to get to my goal. And that will do it. And hopefully everyone is doing well and staying safe. And I will see you next time. So peace out.